Welcome back to part two of our tutorial on how to create a trading card. As you can see, we've done a pretty good job with part one. We're about halfway through making this trading card. If we have a look at the finished product, you can see that we still got this bottom section to add in, which is adding a QR code, the name of our player, and the team logo. You can also see that the picture and the text are slightly rotated to the left, so we might start by doing that to our picture and our text. So grabbing the Move tool from our toolbox, make sure you've got Auto Select checked and Show Transform Controls checked up the top of your page there. We'll start with the text by clicking on it. And if you hover your mouse just off one of the corners, you can click and drag and just rotate your text slightly. Make sure it doesn't go outside the blue line. We must stay within that blue line. Press the tick once you're happy with a slight rotation. And we'll do the same for our picture of our sports star. We click on it, hover off the edges slightly and just give it a bit of a rotate. Nothing too drastic. Just gives it a little bit of edge by rotating it. Okay, so make sure you press enter or the little tick at the top when you're done. If you need to, you can pick up the text and just move it around, get it into a good spot. You can use your arrow keys as well just to nudge the text around. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with how that's looking. So the next thing you want to add in if we look at the finished product, is this rectangle that's faded out in the background here. So to do that, we will make a new layer. So hit the little piece of paper next to the trash can. Grab your rectangle tool. We'll press the letter U for the shortcut. Make sure your color, which is the top color box here, is set to white. And in the bottom third of the page, we're going to add in a rectangle. Make sure you go over the bleed lines. And add in a rectangle, oh, I reckon, about that size that I've got. Okay, so once you've got that, what we need to do now is fade out one side of our rectangle and leave the other side faded in. And to do that, we're going to create a thing called a layer mask. So go over to your layers panel and make sure you've got your rectangle selected. Down the bottom, there's a little um, button with a circle inside a square. And when you hover over that little box, it will say Add Layer Mask. So I'm going to click on that, and you'll see my rectangle layer now has two boxes inside it. Okay, that means a layer mask has been added to it. You need to be clicked on the solid white box inside the rectangle layer. Once you've selected that white box, I want you to head over to the Gradient tool now. You can press the letter G for the shortcut key, or you can just pick it up from the toolbox. It's got the black and white fading into one another. Once you've got that selected, make sure you've got up here the black and white option. And I'm going to click from the left hand side of my white rectangle and drag in to about three quarters of the way across and just drop it. And you'll see what it does is fades out the left hand side of our rectangle but leaves the right side still faded in. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Next thing we might do is add a bit of a color to this. If you don't like the white that's chosen there, you need to double click on this transparent box over here now. And when you double click on it, the color picker will come up. And you can either pick a color from over here by sliding the sliders around, or you can click on your picture somewhere. And that's what I recommend you do. Pick a color that already exists in your picture. So I could go a green to match the green on his shirt. I could go a red to match the red. Or I might go back to white and just choose a white colour. So it's up to you what colour you pick. I actually think the white looks good for mine, so I will click on OK. I'm going to stick with a whitish kind of colour. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Next thing we'll do is add some text over the top of it. So I'm going to add another new layer. By pressing the new layer button, I'll grab my text tool. I'll press the letter T for the shortcut. And what I'm going to do is pick a new color for my text. This time, oh, I might try a greeny color just to match the green on his shirt. Mm, that's pretty good green. I'm going to go into my box down here. I've got the same font as before. I can change that in a moment if I would like. I'm just going to write the player's name. So use your move tool to move it around into a good position. You do want to have a bit of space on the right hand side for the team logo and you want a bit of space on the left hand side for a QR code. So I might even 
and change the size just down a little bit from 48 um, oh my god that size 40 for mine I'm going to stick with Rockwell extra bold as my font I think that looks best okay so about size 40 looks good if you want you might need to resize your rectangle a little bit just to bring it in more in line with your text there we go that looks pretty good all right with that text it's a little bit plain and boring at the moment you can see our text up the top is full of life because it has the stroke around the outside of it so let's do something similar to the text down here so from our layers panel we'll right click on it go to our blending options and add in a stroke again you probably want to up that stroke a bit I'm going to go up to, oh, we'll see, let's have a look at that size 15 again. Yeah, 15 looks pretty good. And I might make the colour white again. So I've got a nice white stroke around my text. Um, I will click on OK. That looks pretty good. Remember, you've got to right click on this and convert it to a smart object again if you would like to add a second stroke, which is what I want to do. Okay, so once that text layer has been converted to a smart object, we'll right click on it again and make a blending option and we'll put another stroke on. We'll leave it as about 3 pixels, you can go up to about 5 pixels at the most. Change the colour to match your original text colour. So I'm going to click back on the green here, so I'll get that green stroke again. And click OK. Ah, uh, that looks pretty good. I might even add something a bit different on this one. I might add a drop shadow in. So, looking down my list of effects here, there is an option to put in a drop shadow. You'll find it right at the bottom. With your drop shadow, I'm going to change the distance, the spread and the size to 10 pixels each. You can just see a little shadow appears behind the text. I think it's a nice touch. When you're happy with it, click OK. Okay, so that text is looking pretty good now, pretty sporty. Next thing we might do is add in the logo for our team. So in Curriculum Drive you can get a copy of the school logo, or you can go into Google and find a team logo and copy it in. It's best if it has a transparent background. So I'm lucky because the picture that I have saved has a transparent background. So when I place it in, you can see that it's just the logo. I'm going to hold shift and resize it. It's going to be pretty small, this logo. I'm just going to get it to fit in next to the text. I'll use my arrow keys to nudge it about a bit. Make sure it stays inside the blue line. When you're happy, press the tick at the top. And you've got your team logo in now. So the last thing we want to add in is the QR code. If we look at the finished product, whoops. This is what a QR code is. If you've never seen a QR code before, you basically get your smartphone out and using a QR code uh, reader, which is an app you can get off the App Store, there's plenty of them around, you just scan that code with your phone and that will take you somewhere. For example, a Facebook page about Greg Inglis, it could be his official website. If we have a look at this website called qrstuff.com, this is where you make these little QR codes and these are all the different types of things you can do with QR codes so you can link them to YouTube videos, Google Maps there's the Facebooks and whatnot to keep life simple I'm going to just link it to Greg Inglis's official website so I'm just going to write in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash I might turn caps lock off actually and it's just www.greginglis com okay once you've typed that in over here a preview will appear of what your QR code is going to look like you can click on it and download it okay and you can see over here I've downloaded my QR code and that will be saved in my downloads folder so what I'm going to do is head back over to Photoshop now and insert this QR code onto my trading card so people can get their smartphone and actually scan that and they can find out more information about Greg Inglis. So I'm going to get a file and I'm going to place in my QR code. There it is. Comes out reasonably big, so I'm just going to hold shift and 
resize it. Remember, don't go outside the blue safety zone. I'm going to go outside the border of the picture a little bit here, though. Um, that looks pretty good. I'll press Enter. Now I can move my text and logo out a bit just to give it a bit more space. Okay, that's looking pretty good now. If you really wanted to, you could click on your QR code and maybe throw a shadow or something behind it. That might just add a little bit more detail to it. So I'll change all these to 10, 10, and 10. And that little shadow behind the QR code just adds a little bit of depth to the picture. That's basically it. That's our trading card finish for now. So if you would like, you can go to File, Save for Web. Okay, and if we look at two up, we'll change it to a JPEG. Make sure the quality is set fairly high, either to 60 or 80% quality. I'm going to bump it up to about 80% quality. That gives me an image that's just over just over two megabytes in size, so it's not too bad. That's a really high quality picture, and that will print nicely. So I'll click Save, and make sure you save it in your ITS folder somewhere. Um, I'll just put it in my Lesson 8 folder, and we'll just call it Trading Card, and click Save. Okay, so if I head over to my Lesson 8 folder where I just saved it, and I will open up Trading Card, there's my finished trading card. So that's it.